Hey guys, in this tutorial I'm going to be showing you how to create a vector halftone pattern in Adobe Illustrator. So we'll start off by getting the ellipse tool and creating a circle holding shift and alt. And then we're going to add a gradient to it by pressing the gradient here. Then what you want to do is go to effect, come down to pixelate and then click on color halftone. Once this is open, you'll see that I've already got these selected, set to 90, 90, 90, 90 and channel 1, 2, 3 and 4 stands for CMYK. So, um, Basically, if these aren't the same values, then what you'll have is different coloured circles coming off, which isn't what you want. So, I've, I've already set mine to 90, which means that the circles will go straight up. So, I'm going to set the radius to 20. This is just the size of the circles, so let's do that. Oops. Press OK. And as you can see, you've now got your halftone pattern, but it's still it's not a vector as you can see it's pixels um, also you might want to open the appearance panel by going to window appearance and this just means that instead of having to undo it go back and then change the size of the um, pixels you can actually just click this once and this will open so I want to say I want to change this now to 40 pixels because they weren't big enough that's okay and as you can see it's much bigger and it just saves you having to undo it and then reapply the effect and whatnot so just let's get that what we're going to do now is click on this, come to object at the top, and then click on expand appearance. Once you've done that, you want to hit image trace. Wait for that to do, do its job. Right, once that's done that, as you can see, it's not quite perfect, and you can't actually do anything with it. So what you want to do is open the image trace panel here by pressing this. And if this isn't open, just click the advanced button here. And you first thing you want to do is tick the ignore white you want you make sure you want to make sure that's definitely ticked and we'll let it do that and then I'm gonna drag the threshold pretty much to the top these are oh, not that <laughs> these are the settings I've found to be the best to make it look as good as it can so I'm just gonna show you these just drag these pretty much to the top um, yep corners I usually drag that down to the bottom and then I'm gonna drag the noise down to zero as well Right, once you've done that, you can close this, and then you can at the top here just hit expand. And as you can see, now you've only got the circles. I mean, if you zoom in, you'll see some of them aren't completely perfect, and that's going to happen. <laughs> um, up to now, I haven't actually found a way to avoid this, and I, from what I've seen, other people can't seem to figure this out either. So, but from here, you literally can't even tell anyway. So that's pretty fine. Um, an example of where this could be used would be. Some of you might have seen this that I did for a college project. So as you can see, these aren't actually circles. So I'll go back to here and basically all I've done for that, all you do is go to the pen tool, create the shape that you want. So just create a random shape here. It's a weird shape. Say, so got that shape. Add my gradient to it. Linear. And you can change the angle. So I'm just going to set this to minus 90. So this is at the bottom. Uh, effect. And if you've just used it, it should still be at the top here. So you can just click color half tone, or you can apply the color half tone. So I'll just do that to make it easier and faster. And what you're going to do now is repeat the process that you did before: object, expand appearance, image trace. Wait for it to load. Then you want to open the image trace panel. Ignore whites. Drag the threshold pretty high up not completely to the top because you'll see that it just goes to a black image which isn't what you want. Paths, again drag that to the top. Corners to the bottom and same for the noise. To the bottom. You can close that and hit expand and now you've got this. So like I said, here I've used it for shadows, but you could use it for various different things, just see what it comes in handy with. These two shoes I will actually be giving away for download, uh, the project files, so that you can download these, change the colours, do whatever you want with them really. But yeah, you can change the colours, make your own shoes, so for example, just change this to a random colour and make it match. But then, once you've done that, you will have to go in and change the... Um, shadow color here as well so you might want to get these and just create say, do that 
and make it a slightly darker shade and then just go through and do that for the rest of it so you can essentially create your own style shoe. Um, I hope this tutorial has helped you guys. Let me know what other tutorials you want to see. Um, thanks for watching.